Why are so many people in church stuck? Do you know, I just don't understand this. So many people are not advancing not in their growing. Christianity. They're not growing. Yeah. I think, um, first of all, Christianity is a spiritual religion. It's a spiritual way of life. Michael, but what has happened is we've ne- we've lost the spiritual element of that. Right. And that's exactly why people are not growing. One of the primary reasons growth is not happening in individual believers is we've taken the spirit part out of it. And we are trying to advance forward in the flesh. What we are facing today is the same challenge apostles of the first century faced. Uh, Apostle Paul especially faced. If you look at it, Apostle Paul came with the New Testament, new wine teaching, right? And it was a struggle for him because he would train a group of Christians, whether it's right. in Galatia or Ephesus or Corinth. And then when he returns or when he goes for the next journey and returns home and he sees these guys going back to square one again. But what is the square one? Square one means if you look at Galatians 3, 1, we'll uh, understand some more context of what's going on, that, what was going on then and what's going on now. Galatians 3, 1. Yeah. Oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? It was before your eyes that Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified. Let me ask you only this. Did you receive a spirit by works or by the law or by hearing with faith? Yes. And Paul calls on to say, half after having started in the spirit, why have you gone back to the law? So this has been a constant struggle uh, in the New Testament church back in first century AD. And even now we are facing the same thing. So we are having a group at a breed of leaders who are trying to train people to have the New Testament, new wine mindset of being in the spirit, uh, completely grounded in the love of God, understanding the finished work of Christ, Amen. getting people to be liberated. and But then... They, you train them, and then they go out the door. Second day, they get invited to a conference, which teaches the old stuff again. And then they get stuck back in the St- old way. Exactly. The old stuff is what? Teaching again how to get right with God through works. Right. Oh, are you a good boy? Did you do something wrong? Oh, did you do this? Then, oh, man, then you're done. You know, giving the condemnation mentality, work-based mentality. See, none of these mixes together. This is what Jesus said. You cannot pour new wine into old wineskin. Right? Why? Because it will burst forth. New wine has to be poured into new wine skin. So the new breed of leaders who are spirit forward are training people to be grounded in their new righteousness in Christ. That's new wine, new wine skin. Right. Uh, but then the old wine skin preachers teaching them about works based salvation, work based performance, and the whole law confusing the people. So you're saying yeah. that even if you're moving up in the spirit, if you subject yourself to old teaching yes. that's not spiritual, yes, no. that does not have revelation, it actually could hold you back. It can not only hold you back, uh, yes, definitely hold you back. It will not let you advance, but it'll also completely collapse you. This is what Jesus said. It'll burst forth, right. meaning that mindset. When we say wineskin, is talking about your mindset, the elasticity of your mind. But if you're going to hold on to the whole thing, you'll completely collapse. And actually, you risk uh, backsli- backsliding, actually. You might just go away from God. Right. Because I've seen a lot of good, intelligent people who don't go to church. Doesn't right. make sense to them. and Because it doesn't make sense because of this hodgepodge of teachings that are going out. Because if you look at it, there's a lot of these people sitting there or, or standing in the pulpits and talking about these ideals. Have you done this? Have you done that? Or oh, if not, are you a sinner? Or oh, if you sinned in the, if you've done the same sin 10 times and you're done, all this kind of condemnation. Instead, we need to be focused on preaching righteousness. We keep on reminding people, you are righteous. You are in, you are holy. You've been made right with God through the blood of Jesus. You are a spirit. Your performance is not what makes you better. It's your true identity in Christ. These are the kind of teachings that need to be reinforced. We got to keep people practicing a righteous identity rather than a sinful identity. But what does the old wineskin does is it keeps you in a sin mentality, sin consciousness, hyper sinful or hyper sin consciousness. That's what I call it because you're always like, oh, am I doing something wrong? Am I doing something wrong? Am I doing something wrong? That's not New Testament Christianity. We have to make a, ra- we have to draw a radical line. We have to draw a line in the sand when it comes to who we listen to from now on. Amen. We cannot mix old wine preachers and new wine preachers. You have to be very exclusive that and say, I will only 
listen to Christ like New Testament preachers who help me build my identity in God who continue to uh, push me uh, higher who takes me higher who helps me ascend higher this is the kind of preaching you need to listen to not the the like there are two kinds of other old wine skins one is the condemnation preachers who keeps on preaching about sin they just keep saying the word sin 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 sin, sin. And the second one is they're neutral, meaning they just keep you lulled and slumbered. Asleep. Sli- uh, yeah, pretty much asleep. They might not preach about sin, but they're not advancing you forward either. Both these groups are, are very dangerous. You need to come to the new breed that will push you forward, push, propel you higher into your higher uh, place as a son of God, seated in the heavenly places, sins remitted for by the blood of Jesus. This is where your growth happens. Bible says where there is no conscience of sin anymore because you are, you know you're a spirit. Right. You see what I'm saying? I do see what you're yeah. saying. I will say I've been through this journey. For many years, I didn't have very much awareness of the Holy Spirit, mm. but I just got shocked by the Holy Spirit one day, and mm. my eyes, my spiritual eyes came open, yes. and everything was different. Yes. It was after that I had encountered Jesus and had experienced salvation yes. with Him. But one thing I want to mention, the Holy Spirit at that time told me, He says, I don't want you to go around your old friends that think the way you used to think for just six months. <laughs> no, this is exactly yeah, what he told months. me. I'm just going to share the story. For six months, because they are going to destroy this, yeah. because it's so tender and it's so Amen. new in your life, and you have a lot of doubt surrounding oh, this. Yes. That you know, it'll just Love it'll that. just wash away. You know, I think I, there might be the reason why Apostle Paul says, as soon as he got the gospel, he went into Arabia, went away for three years. Yeah, he just went away and in stuck, a desert, in the desert. Yeah, and sat at the feet of Jesus because the problem is there's so much noise and er- error in the Christendom, which is unbelievable. I would even say 90, 90 to ninety five percent of Christian books out there are old wine skin, even though we have Probably, book, filled yeah. it in the bookshelves. The real New Testament, new identity, uh, and those kind of teachings, new uh, righteousness, and all those revelatory teachings are only found in maybe 5% of the uh, leaderships and believers that are out there. This is why, as Michael said, we have to be exclusive. We cannot combine both. If you want to advance forward, if you want to move forward in the spirit with power and might and confidence, because the thing is in ministry, Michael, or in Doing any exploits for God, you got to have a confident heart that is free from sin consciousness. Amen. Anytime you feel condemnation and feel sorry and confused and haze, that's demonic because the devil wants to pile you up with condemnation and all sorts of confusion. That's not from God. God wants you to know that you are fully covered by his blood, fully healed. You are a spirit. You are not your flesh. So all these knowledge and surrounding yourself with this kind of voices will help you move forward. And the Holy Spirit reminds you of these things yes. continuously. Yes. That's why it's so critical to have the Holy Spirit invited into your yes. life. Yes. He reminds you that we should see ourselves the way God sees us, yes. not the way that we might think about ourselves or even others think about us. Yeah. We should only think about ourselves the way God God thinks about us. No, I totally agree. Now, listen, as you start this exercise, as you start this journey into the new pathway, because Jesus told me this, narrow is the path that leads to eternal life. And he said that. He said, yeah, he told me it's a, your mind has to be so focused on this path, narrow path. Okay. It's not a physical path. The spiritual path that takes you to the kingdom experience has to be ultra focused. It's narrow. And now while you go through this path, you might face a lot of obstacles. Demons are going to try their level best to derail you, to confuse you, to, to get you invited to one of those old wine skin conferences and all that. But you got to take the narrow path. And the good thing is the end of the narrow path leads to a broad place. Your mind gets enlarged. Right. You're suddenly... Your ministry gets enlarged. Everything gets enlarged. Your household. <laughs> so you have a completely wider perspective and broad um, outlook towards life. And that opens up to you yes. the infinite possibilities of heaven mm. that can come into your life That's it. through your relationship with the Holy Spirit yes. to solve all of the problems yes. in this earth.